Problems with model steam engine reversing valve gear part 3. The piston rod glands need packing and I use an alternative method for this followed by making the reversing valve gear function efficiently on the individual cylinders. On screen at the moment, next to the engine, I'm showing some Teflon coated yarn. This is what I would normally use for packing stuffing glands on steam engines. In the last episode, when I was test running the engine at a high speed, it suddenly stopped. Coincidentally, this happened when the camera battery went flat and the camera switched off, so I didn't get any footage of it. At first I thought one of the pistons had come loose, so I had a look in the cylinders, and they were both fine, and here I'm refitting the cylinder covers. I received a message from one of my viewers in the USA called Charlie, who said he was confused about the valve timing. In the previous video I mentioned that the largest lobe of the eccentric needed to be at 90 degrees to the crank pin. When setting valve gear for a twin cylinder engine, you need to have the largest lobe of one of the eccentrics at 90 degrees to the crank pin at one side, and then at the other side of the crank web, you need to put the largest lobe of the eccentric at 90 degrees to the crank pin, but at the other side, if you see what I mean. If you set the lobes of the eccentric sheaves at the same side of the crank pin for both cylinders, the engine will not rotate. I don't think I can explain it any other way. One of the studs in the top of the cylinder is a bit too long, so here I'm using a coarse sanding disc fitted in my Proxon motor tool to shorten it. When doing jobs like this in situ, it's very important to cover up any of the bearings. You can't see it in this clip, but there's a piece of cloth packed in and around the bottom part of the engine. As you can see, I'm using an old toothbrush to remove all of the filings from the top of the cylinder. Personally, I find gland packing to be quite difficult on a Stuart Double Ten. I made the mistake of assuming that the builder would have packed the glands as he built the engine, but there isn't any gland packing in any of the glands. And now I've fitted the reversing gear, it's even more difficult. My scriber was too big for this job, I bent a piece of MIG welding wire and I tried to use this. In the end I gave it up. Then I remembered something that my good friend Don English told me quite a while back. Just cut a silicone o-ring fit it around the piston rod and tighten up the gland. This should be more than adequate to seal the piston rod and prevent it leaking. This is often a good alternative for packing glands when they prove difficult. It's better than throwing the engine through the window. After fitting an o-ring in this manner to each of the stuffing glands it was time for a test run. I cannot recommend oiling the engine when it's running. I do it all the time but it's not a very good idea. If you catch the spout of your oil can in the mechanism, you could damage your oil can, or even worse, damage the engine. So just be happy watching me do it, don't try it yourself. Oil the engine first, then run it. Don't forget as you see these sections of the engine running, it's only running on one side at a time. The logic is, if you get each side to run perfectly, when you connect up the inlet piping and apply compressed air or steam to the engine, it should run really well, with all parts working in harmony. In this clip I'm checking the timing. I did an awful lot of tweaking in this episode, but I didn't video it because it's boring. At this stage of the job I could still feel some tightness. I think that the other end of the valve gear needs adjusting. When I've finished adjusting this engine it will be really smooth and the reversing lever will traverse the expansion link perfectly. Here once again I'm using my ruler to check the dimensions. If you've seen the previous episode, you've seen this clip before. This is at the reversing gear end. And it's very important that both of the eccentric rods are the same length, and that both of them are not too long either. The engine is beginning to run quite smoothly. Some of this is due to the valve gear bedding in. And for my critics, yes, I am running the engine very fast, on purpose, to see if anything drops off it. If anything is going to go wrong with the engine, I'd rather it do it on my workbench than when I send it out to the customer. As you can see, the engine is running quite well, especially as it's dragging one cylinder. What I'm doing at the moment is just tweaking the length of the eccentric rod because I think it was a fraction too long. If this eccentric rod is too long, then the expansion link is very likely to collide with the drop arm. As I'm rotating the engine now, it feels smoother, but the expansion link is still touching the drop arm but without putting any pressure on it. My answer to this is to slightly round the top end of the expansion link so it doesn't touch the drop arm at all. 
In extreme cases, the drop arms move around as they're hit by the expansion link at every stroke. In this clip, I'm applying some lubricating oil to the steam chest of the other cylinder because this one is being dragged by the other one and as such is not getting any lubrication. I've been running this engine with the bearings slack. Now it's time to tighten them up. The crankshaft feels a bit firmer, but it should run in OK. Still running on the same cylinder, now you can see how well it's running. If I move the reversing lever at the right time, the engine immediately goes into reverse. Steam engines are really good at this. Even the full size ones can reverse very quickly. I think the valve gear on the cylinder nearest the flywheel is fine. Now it's time to work on the other side. And this clip shows me attaching the airline to the cylinder furthest away from the flywheel. But I'm not going to admit any compressed air immediately. Before I do that, I'm measuring the distance between the valve forks and the eccentric straps on both sides. And the good news is, yes, they are both 7 eighths of an inch. As I've mentioned before, I do not have any instructions for putting this valve gear together. I don't really need it. Besides, I like to get there by trial and error. Here, I'm tightening up the centre bearing. And this does stiffen the engine up considerably because I don't think everything is 100% true in this area. The time to worry is when you tighten up the bearings and can't rotate the crankshaft. This is not the case with this engine. It just doesn't feel as loose as it did. Most of the parts on this particular engine are held together using fixings which are only 7BA, very, very small. So you have to be quite careful not to shear them off. It can be quite difficult because you have to tighten the parts firmly, but without breaking them. Here I'm just checking that the gudgeon pins in the crosshead are tight, and they are. What I'm doing here to confirm that the valve gear is set correctly is I'm moving the lever towards reverse at each end. This is called notching up, and it notches up very evenly and equally at both sides. I've just noticed that the taps on the cylinder drains have come loose. I'll fix this at the end of the video. I can't really add any more, the rest of the video will just be the engine running to the end. Stay healthy, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back.